Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim, supporting traders globally in achieving their financial security and freedom. We have a short watch list we're going to talk about today, and today's date is December the 11th, 2019. Miss Vegas. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Hope you had a nice trading day. We finally got through that FOMC meeting. We heard that the rates aren't going to be changed. No surprise. I think we already knew that. So on to the list for today. We're going to talk about Boeing, Tesla, Lululemon, RKDA, and MGI. So we're going to start with Boeing. And, you know, Boeing was in the news in the morning. And, um, you know, the news in the morning was that uh, they're obviously not going to, um, you know, have those the aircrafts of the Boeing 737 MAX jets um, recertified and going into the air in 2019. They're obviously going to have to extend this into 2020. Uh, they did mention that um, they would have to be reapproved, uh, you know, hopefully by the end of the year. But regulators say that they will not likely do that for some time until sometime in 2020. So when will that be? We don't know. So I was actually expecting as a result of that commentary in the morning and it was on the news uh, that um, Boeing would have uh, quite a pullback. And I was actually thinking, oh, my goodness. Boeing's not going to do well today. I'm going to have to keep this on watch for a potential put. And I got to tell you, Boeing shocked me completely. Um, I mean, I didn't buy puts at all. I just kept watching it in the morning just to see how it would behave. And you know what? It was actually holding quite well. Um, I noticed starting around 11 o'clock is kind of when I noticed that Boeing starting to reverse up. And I decided at that time, I was pretty confident to call a trade idea. And the idea that I did share with the room was the 350 calls. And those were going for at the time for about a dollar. Some people got in around 90 cents, 99 cents. And you know what? Love that trade. Went all the way up to 290 so far. Uh, kept it overnight. Uh, so we'll see tomorrow how Boeing does uh, react and perform. But Jim, let's hear about Boeing because you nailed those supports and resistance today, one after another, after another, after another. So love to hear your comments on BA. Oh, yes. Well, we heard the news right out of the gate this morning, and it did take a pretty good dip. I mean, it dipped all the way from the resistance line or the support line that I did have at 348.39 all the way down to this low of 338. So that was a good $10 dip and it was fast. And what I like about when I point out these double bottoms, right out of the gate, she started popping up right when that bell started ringing and she pulled back and created a little lower high here and then kind of retested up here to this resistance level that we had a consolidated period right in here. Once it hit that, it pulled on back and created that double bottom. Usually I say get in a trade, you know, if it have a lower high here. But in this case, with the news the way it was, you want to be a little bit more patient. So after it hit that second double bottom, then she really started taking off. And this was a beautiful call this morning on the bad news. And really, it's not bad news to me. I'd rather see them grounded, make sure it's all right. Just the algorithms took it you know as a, as a negative and just pulled that stock on back well we closed back higher than what we closed at yesterday so we're back up here in this double top resistance so we just got to be careful and be patient with it for the rest of the year and kind of not want to hit this next resistance level which we did hit pre-market yesterday at 351.88 i have a 351.84 resistance line it can bounce up there and then pull back down and, and maybe consolidate in this area. But for right now, this was a beautiful call today. I'm going to think maybe support, your first support is probably going to be that red line at 348.39. And if that don't hold, we'll play it off the 200 and see if it holds at the 200 EMA on a daily one minute. And that's going to be Boeing. The resistance, I don't want to see it go too much higher than 351.84. But you never can tell. This is a trade you follow the trend. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be Tesla. Yes. And you know what? Tesla yesterday, 
uh, looking at it from a swing trade perspective. Swing did overnight, and you know what? Sold those beautiful calls this morning at 440. Uh, so beautiful overnight swing, and still took um, went back in this. I mean, I tried to trade this again on the second round. Uh, didn't really have much of a luck on round two. I mean, I did, you know, the stock was getting shorted and, uh, you know, it was pretty tough trading that. Um, ended up closing the second round for a loss. And then I decided, you know what, I'm, I'm really liking the volume coming through and the, and the tape. And I still kind of, I do like the weekly chart still. I still believe it's bullish. And um, I went ahead and bought the 352.50 calls. And I actually bought those um, for $345 each. So we'll see how that trade works out for me. Um, the other thing I want to mention too about Tesla, you know, the, uh, the Tesla Model 3 won the Edmunds.com best electric vehicle category with the car shopping website and industry consultant saying that for the price, there is no other electric vehicle that comes close to matching the appeal that Tesla does. And the editors have selected the, this for the 2019 top vehicle, by the way, based on very extensive vehicle testing and um, that included the highest ranking vehicles within each category. And, uh, you know, a lot of people love the Edmunds rating and they, they also have a magazine subscription. And a lot of people, you know, that read that, they swear by it and you know if there's comments about a certain car it'll actually steer them away from even considering it as a buy but if there's comments that are obviously positive like in this case um, it's going to attract a potential customer to buy that car so tesla has been awarded the top uh best electric car by Edmonds. so congratulations to tesla model 3 that's great news jim let's hear about tesla tesla is going to go to 400 next year and maybe even higher I have a, you know, I don't want to boast, but I have a 2020 target on Tesla for 600, but I don't think we'll see that. But I definitely want to see that 400 and that 500 come up. But every chart tells a story, and that's what I was talking about Tesla in the room today. We hit a resistance pre-market right here at 353.39, and that is a new red line of, of resistance that I made, which later on in the afternoon or early in the morning became support. They got in the trade here on the pullback right out of the gate. It ran all the way up to hit resistance. And my resistance on this trade was 356.99. And I added that in, I think today. And I told the room, I said, wait for this thing to pull back to that support level that we had pre-market at previous high. And that was at 353.59. Bam, we hit that right on the button. And she went ahead and created a lower high. Anytime I see a lower high like this, that's the time you just want to go ahead and take your profit, get out of the trade, and just call it a day. And maybe get in it before close. Well, we did pull back below that support level into right before close here at my next support level, which was right down in here at the breakout that we had this morning at 352.02. So I always tell everybody, every chart has a story. It tells a story. It'll tell you if it's bullish, bearish. Once you start to be able to read the charts, all these squig, these lines on here are my extended trend lines that I've mastered over many, many years. And I add them on during the day. You know, it gives me a, a point where if I'm scalping or if I want to get out of a trade or if I want to play a pullback, that's then I know. And when they're red, that's that means they're solid. And those are solid supports. So this is Tesla. I think we're starting to rebound now after hours. This stock's been nothing but bullish for me from day one. Although the bears try to tackle it and try to push it down, they they just can't win with this trade. Unless Elon gets on there and starts tweeting again, and he's been kind of sanctioned not to do that. And that's why the stock ran back up. That's the only reason it went down. And I think this, will, like Miss Vegas says, hit that number one list. That That is just a bullish thing to go into 2020 and run this up to the $400 area and that's going to be Tesla I'd go long on this or I'd wait and try to get in on these dips and scalp it the way we do with the options the next one we're going to talk about and actually I'm going to go ahead and call low support down here at 349.75 and then the pivot point is where we are right now after hours at 353.59 
and the resistance that we need to break is going to be that 356.99, 357. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Lulu, one of my favorite yeah, ones. So Lululemon, I mean, you know what? Lululemon had their earnings, the earnings did come out. Um, and you know, Lululemon's, the guidance was a bit down. They did beat revenue expectations, they said by two cents. Um, but the thing is, the outlook is that they saw their fourth quarter earnings, earnings per share of 210 to 213, which was in line, by the way, with the consensus views of 212 on revenue of $1.315 billion. And, um, you know, for the full fiscal year, the management has raised its earnings per share guidance um, largely above consensus. So, you know, Lululemon is, uh, you know, one of those stocks that, you know, a little bit overextended probably. And now here's you know, Miles with a look ahead at what will be making of, headlines uh, on Wednesday. Well, the final Fed the meeting of the report. decade concludes I mean, on Wednesday. Really and while no changes are expected, this meeting will bring is, to an end an extraordinary decade for monetary like policy. When we started, rates were at zero, and they would remain um, there for nearly six stores, more years wine, uh, beyond uh, even the most conservative wine, estimates at the time. Money, Opinion pages were warning about dollar debasement, ratio, runaway run inflation, and yet and, we conclude um, the decade you know, with below target and inflation in the dollar. After hours when the earnings first came out, and Jim's going to talk about the chart in just a second, but I mean, as soon as those earnings did come out, right away you could see these panic sellers, you know, dumping shares, and the stock went all the way down to like 215. And earlier in the day, it was around 235.50. I mean, that's quite the drop, right? All the yep. way down to 215. And, you know, right here after hours, I mean, we did see this reversing here back up towards, you know, 224, currently trading right now around 223.28. And this is live data as I'm speaking to you. So, you know, it has already reversed over back $8 from the drop. So, Jim, let's hear your thoughts on Lululemon, please. Yeah, I think Lululemon is going to rest for the rest of the year. And just going to kind of consolidate in this pattern right here, no higher than maybe 225.81. That's going to be the resistance that it needs to break. We did have a high today, and people are buying into the earnings, and that's just not the game I play. I like to wait to hear what the earnings are about. They usually pull back in most cases, and then that's another time if, if you're not a full time trader, you can get in here right at close and play off these earnings. But we did, we're at an equilibrium. On the, on the pullback to 215 from this 235, we're right about in the middle right now, right at 222.93. Now, I do believe this stock can pull back a little bit more, and we're going to put a low support down here at 215.54 for now. And I'd say that probably that second, first support is going to be here right around the 220.70 area. So you can stop this chart at any time. I, it's going to be, I'm just going to watch this tomorrow, probably leave it alone until next week. Let it consolidate off the earnings and then get back in the trade starting next week. And that's going to be Lulu. Now, if it does break up, it needs to break that resistance level of 225.81. If not, it can pull back to that 215 and create a new channel. I'm 100% bullish on Lulu. The earnings were excellent, just as I predicted. And I don't know if they can predict the guidance because, you know, people that are a little bit more wealthier. Um, are doing better off now than, than they have in the past, and they've got the money to go out and still spend and buy their Lulus. So I'm, I'm not bearish at all on this stock, just the price action right now. And that's going to be Lulu. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be RKDA. Yeah, so I just want to talk to you about RKDA quickly. I mean, you know, RKDA is biosciences. You know, they're into uh, innovative crops. They like to look for healthy food ingredients to help meet consumer demands that are looking for a healthier diet. So, you know, they have basically a portfolio of agronomic traits that enable the farmers around the world. Uh, and I'm just going straight from their website here to produce productive, challenging economic environmental conditions. They have also a video that you can watch um, about the company. But what they do, you know, this company is in California. And what they do is they're focused on the development of, of traits to enhance actually the crop quality and actually the productivity. And, you know, the company, RKDA, is actually partly owned by Moral Compass Corporation, in case you guys didn't know. Um, but the reason I actually like this one here, RKDA, it has previously run um, in the past, but I really like RKDA really more from a swing trade perspective. So, you know, it may not necessarily pop uh, all day and have a huge run, but I had a nice little, uh, little pop today. 
Um, but I do like the swing trade on this particular stock. And the reason is that it is to me in a new uptrend and um, it is definitely overbought. And so Jim, why don't you talk to us about some supports and resistances here? Because to me, the stock's in a new uptrend and it has support here also at the 200 day. And so I'd like to see where this is going to go in the next maybe couple trading sessions in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, well, we're topping up here to a little resistance level right now, right around the 555, 550, 563 area. Uh, we did have a run. This did pop up on the scanner quite a bit yesterday and had a, a $6 high. And then she pulled back and corrected today and found support right down here at this level right down in here, as you see on the 20-day. I'm going to pull up the 20-day. We can get a better look at it. Mirror trade's moving a little slow. So right down in here is where it found support. And we kind of come almost right to that area right in here, if you see see that. So we're going to put that trend line right here at the base of that candle. That's going to be our support that we want to hold. Oops, got the wrong thing on. Right about there. Right at 520. I was going off the base of these candles and you see it lined it up right with that one right there and it's lined up pretty much with all these over in here these ones that were had the highs and then you had that breakout so it seems like after every good breakout it likes to pull back a little bit and yesterday was a very healthy day for it pulled back today found that support level here at 520 that's going to be your solid low support I don't and it can fall back into the 200 on the 20 day one hour which we have right here as, as a double confirmation of the 200 and the 507, which I already had up here on a trend line from, from previously, where we had this breakout back in here. So right now, we're going to watch this. I don't want to see it go much lower than this 528. That's going to be your solid support. If that holds and then retraces back up here, we could be creating a new channel. As you notice, you could draw a trend line all the way from here on a 20 day, from right about down here where this began, and run it all the way up to there, where it just kind of runs up and runs up there. And then that's going to be like your solid support. So if it pulls back, it could hit that trend line. And right now, and this moves as the day moves on, this will keep going up. So right now we're at 533. So that 528 is going to be your solid support. Resistance to break is going to be this area right in here at the 555 level. And that's where we closed at. And then you got your next resistances that go up will be 563 and then the big gap to 586. And that's going to be RKDA. This is one you got to keep on your watch list. It's had a nice 20 day run. And we consolidated in a channel and then had the breakout yesterday and she pulled back. So this one you want to watch in the morning. Low support again at 528. Resistance to break at 586. And right now you're in a pivot point area. Equilibrium right between the both. And that's between 546 and 555. And then the last one we're going to talk about, Miss Vegas. Yeah, I just want to mention uh, MoneyGram. Um, you know, MoneyGram does the global money transferring and, you know, you can go to the post office, but uh, they also have a partnership with CVS, which is the largest retail pharmacy chain in the U.S. Uh, they've actually got, you know, CVS, for those of you that don't know, 10,000, nearly 10,000 locations. Um, so they've actually renewed their partnership for another three years. So um, what they're going to do is obviously the, it's, you know, the convenience factor that you can go there for your prescription needs and do other little errands. And while you're there, if you have to send or receive money, um, you can do that while you're at CVS. You don't actually have to go to a money gram kiosk, which is actually also very popular for people. Um, but it just kind of gives you like a bit of a one-stop shop where, where you can just go there and do it all in one. So uh that's good to know um and uh, they've renewed the contract for another three years so it looks like the partnership's actually going well that they've extended another three years so keep this one on watch i mean the chart's not the prettiest um you know it's um definitely has the potential to reverse here but i'll let jim talk about that because you know moneygram uh definitely on my watch list not not trading it at this time 
not even going to swing it at this time, but I'm going to definitely keep it on watch until Jim gives me that. Okay, go time. Ready to take this this trade. So Jim, let's hear about MoneyGram because we did, we did a little volume search when this news came out, um, but certainly not something I would trade just yet. And it's had a nice run previously, if you recall, back in July, it had a really nice run. I think we're starting to, what you used to say a lot is a pocket pivot. We've had a pretty yeah. good 10-day sell-off here, and now she's starting to curl up. And sometimes I call this a fish hook, but right now it's a pocket pivot. So we're going to pull this up on the 20 day. Let me pull that yearly up one more time. We had a yearly high of 670. Look at that beautiful run it had within two months. It just ran up all the way and we're back down here at that bottom area. We're back down here at that bottom area with a lower high. And with that news today, this could cause it to reverse. And I want to turn this line right in here. To a red line that's going to be our red line resistance that we're going to want to going to want to take or bring it to and that's going to be like a hard resistance for first and then she'll probably kind of question it a little bit and then go ahead and retrace back up to this other section up in here and that's going to be up oh, well you can tell i've had this pretty well charted up it's getting kind of messy so what i'm going to do is i'm going to clean it up i'm going to start fresh I'm going to draw that trend line right down here at 215. We got another resistance right here at 254. Then we're going to have another one right here at 316. And that's going to be good enough for right now because we'll probably bring this up again if it starts to run up. I see a little bit of resistance right in here at the 285 level. So we're going to pull up the 20 day. See how they kind of just line up perfectly. I got another line I want to throw right in here for a resistance. That's going to be right there. And then another one right down here. It's kind of drawn up to where I think we're going to be going on this baby. This is on a 20 day. Now I've lined that up right in here. And then we've got the long resistance up here right around the 328. So this is how we're going to do it. We're going to pull back. If it pulls back any at all, it's going to be the 215 for a low support. We got to break a resistance level of right in here, right around the 245. If it can break that 245, you see that right there? We'll go up to the next resistance level, and that's going to be here at 270. So that's going to be our long resistance. I'll turn this into a red line. And that's going to be what we're our goal to get to. But we got to break this hard resistance right in here at 354. So low support 215. Resistance to break at 270. That's going to be long, and then you've got more room. This is a 20-day chart, and you see with that good news today, we have a lot of rebounding we can make on this trade. Always remember, you know, take profit. You always have another chance to get in it. And that's going to be the last one we did, MGI, and that's it for the aftermarket report. We want to appreciate everybody that watches the video. If you'd subscribe and ring that bell for future updates. We have a little Twitter bird over here. Hit that Twitter bird. We got a new follower last night. Thanks. Appreciate that. We're at 848 now, but you can hit it on the website. If you have a stock twits account, you can hit them too. Find Vegas and I. We have a Pinterest and our YouTube channel. And Miss Vegas, you have anything? Oh, there's one thing else I want to say. I do appreciate the feds not lowering the rates. We got a big buy in balance at the end of the day of over one billion dollars. I think the rest of the week's going to be bullish, and we're going to have our Santa Claus rally. Miss Vegas? You know what? Nothing more to say except everyone have a great evening. And uh, let's see what the market's uh, looking pretty bullish to me. I really love the um, buy side imbalance, so I definitely want to see what tomorrow can bring us. And uh, bottom line is, you know what? Trade green, and if a trade's not working get out and find something else you know you don't have to stay in trades that are not working and maybe i'll talk about that in another video in the coming in the coming weeks because we're going to do some new educational content so on that note have a great night everyone
thank you so much for giving us feedback and thank you to the viewer last night that mentioned that we had our scanner overlapping our video we apologize it was a technical glitch and we've got it corrected today so thank you for that we appreciate your honesty and hopefully you'll listen to today's video and be satisfied so have a great night and see you all tomorrow